Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West here in San Diego, California for all things Vespa here in North America. Today I have a new LED headlight that's specifically designed to fit the Vespa GTS and the Vespa GT from the earlier days. It's a complete replacement housing that has three LED elements or four LED elements in there uh, for both high and low beam. It's also got a low power running mode for a running light. The complete housing is made of cast aluminum, which dissipates heat very well. It's very well engineered, looks pretty sick as well. So for the GTS range of scooters, ever since they've been introduced, they've had the same halogen headlight. It just uses a standard H4 55 watt incandescent or halogen light. And it's got the kind of older um, warm tint you know, that everybody's accustomed to. It's been on cars for years and years. So a few years ago, we found a perfect fit LED bulb that replaces the standard halogen bulb, but is designed for the standard reflector that's come stock on the GTS. Much brighter, has a very nice cutoff, has high and low, and they've worked very well and been a very popular seller for us. And for the new LED kit, the part number is 641080-LED. So it's a standard OEM part number with the suffix of LED. Very simple install, only a couple steps more than just replacement of the bulb. So let me go over some of the basic tools needed to install this LED kit, or if you're just changing the bulb. First of all, on any of the modern Vespas, I would say 2010 and on, Many of the screws are Torx, so you're going to need a T25 Torx driver, which is a star-shaped driver. You're going to need a thin flat-bladed screwdriver to pop the Piaggio badge off the center horn cover. The pair of screws that hold the lower corners of the front handlebar cover are a very small Phillips, so you'll need a number one Phillips driver for those two screws. And the center screw that holds the handlebar cover is a number two, which is a more of a standard size Phillips driver. To, to remove the mirrors, you'll need a 17 millimeter wrench. For the new LED kit, includes new fasteners. They're Allen fasteners. You're gonna need a four millimeter Allen driver, so the hex style driver. And optionally, there's an extra red wire on this LED housing. Starting in 2015 on the GTS, they eliminated the running lights on the headlight, which is an extra little bulb that gives ambient light when you turn the key to the on position before the headlight comes on. On those models, it's not wired in. On anything prior, there's a connector, connector that you just plug right into the existing running light. For the later models, 2015 later, you'll need a couple of extra parts and tools. Need a wire stripper, I'd recommend a small length of 20 gauge or 18 gauge Electrical wire can be any sort. You can cut it out of an old um, lamp cord or whatever, not critical. And two tools that make, or two items that make installation very easy are these posi taps. And our part number on these is EC01T. That's only for 2015 and later if you want to set up the running lights or the parking light, as it's called in other countries. So we'll start with removing the mirrors. On 2017 and prior GTS models and GT models, the covers that go over the brake reservoirs have a small screw. On the 2018 and later, they're now integral into the front handlebar cover, so we don't need to remove those reservoir covers. Typically, it's a small Phillips or a two and a half millimeter um, Allen fastener that holds these reservoir covers on. On the older models, of course, this one not having, having that style, you don't need to worry about it. Get to the mirrors, got two rubber plugs that pull up and you can just crack those loose with that 17 millimeter wrench. Take extra care not to scratch the bodywork. You know, with the wrench, if you slip with the wrench, it's gonna be bad news, you're gonna scratch the paintwork. So all I did is just loosen them, or crack the nuts, essentially, so now they're just hand tight, and you can just go ahead and carefully remove both mirrors. So take a very thin, flat-bladed screwdriver, and on the left side of this badge, you can carefully get it into the, the slot and just carefully pry the badge off. It won't make any damage to the plastic horn cover.
take your T25 driver. Uh, if it's 2010 or earlier, you're gonna need a Phillips uh, screwdriver to remove the center screw that holds this horn cover in place. Lift the horn cover up and pull away from the body. So pretty much looking at your headlight at the six o'clock position and directly below that is a single screw that holds the front part of the handlebar covers on. On the later models, it's gonna be a T25 Torx. Early models, it's gonna be a Phillips screw. One tip is to have either a magnetized screwdriver or grease on the tip of the screw so you don't drop that screw into the body. So with the number one Phillips screwdriver, there's a pair of screws located just underneath the horn and a start button. Go ahead and remove those two screws. They're gonna have a washer included with them. Both screws are identical. So now that the three screws are removed that hold the front handlebar cover on the GTS, go ahead and lift up and get your finger right in where this lever is and you can pull away. And what that does is releases a clip that I'll show you once I get the um, cover off. So underneath this cover, there's a single headlight for the headlight bulb. It just pulls directly off. Um, if you have one of the early models with the running light, there's gonna be a small connector that you'll also need to remove. The pair of tabs on the side of the handlebars are located here, and they engage with the small paw that's molded into the plastic cover here. So go ahead and flip the handlebar cover over. As you can see, there's four screws that retain the headlight assembly. This is a stock headlight assembly, and they're gonna be Phillips screws regardless of the year. And they're rather long screws. Go ahead and remove all four of them. And as you can see, I've, I'm resting the headlight on the seat. That's like a good soft surface that will not scratch the plexiglass lens on the front of the headlight lens. Then take the headlight, it will just give it a small push and it will drop right out of the handlebar covers. So if you're changing the bulb on a, the standard headlight assembly, there's a rubber cap. And this ring, that's a bayonet style ring, and then the bulb pulls it right out. On the new headlight assembly, go ahead and remove all four of the new stainless steel Allen fasteners with the four millimeter Allen screw. The four included screws are all identical length and include a pair of washers to lock them in place. So take the headlight assembly and go ahead and fit it into the handlebar cover. Now you get a glimpse of how it looks. And go ahead and rest this on a soft surface. And you want to start by just getting all the screws started. So include the washers. And one thing about these screws, they're a little larger than the standard screws that came with the scooter, so it may need to thread through the plastic. No need to get a drill out. One trick to speed up installation of a four millimeter Allen key is to use a T25 Torx screwdriver. It happens to fit perfectly in a four millimeter Allen. Take in mind, or keep in mind, that you do not want to um, use this for the final torque. And as you can see, the other two screws are not all the way tightened. You just wanna get them all started. It's always important when installing an item that has multiple fasteners. And it's important to make sure that it starts to thread into the aluminum uh, headlight housing without cross-threading. So we're pretty close now. So now that they're all uh, threaded into the uh, headlight housing, you can go back and forth between the four fasteners and tighten them down. And then take a four millimeter Allen key and just give them the final torque. And you can tell they're completely torqued because 
the split washer, which is the washer that's in between the screw and the flat washer is completely collapsed. You know, take care that not to over tighten these. There's no need to go to town on these because it is a plastic tab that holds the headlight in place. You see all four fasteners have been tightened down. So on the connection to the speedometer, you're gonna wanna locate a yellow with a black stripe. It's almost at the end, right next to this gray wire. And I'm just using a screwdriver to pull it away. And this is only found on 2015 and later GTSs or the Euro 4 or Euro 3 GTS that has the speedometer with a small digital screen for the trip odometer. On prior models, this is not needed as they include an extra connection for this, the running light. So go ahead and take the gray part of the, the posi tap and unthread it from the housing of the posi tap. You can see on the tip of this tap, there's a little uh, silver plated needle. And we'll go ahead and thread that into the gray tap. And it's what it does is it straddles that yellow with black stripe wire. And that's how we're gonna get power to the running light. So go ahead and loosen the red terminal, the red part of the posi tap. So with your short length of wire, go ahead and strip about a quarter inch or six millimeters of the insulation off the wire. Go ahead and drop that right into the red posi tap and tighten down the red uh, ferrule or whatever you want to call it. It's got a nice tight electrical connection there. So with the red wire on the new headlight housing, go ahead and use the second posi tap. Open up the red, the red section and go ahead and insert the wire. Take your headlight connector and plug it into the mating connector that comes off the new headlight assembly. Uh, as an optional step, you can wrap this whole uh, assembly in electrical tape. I found they're quite secure. They don't really come loose, but if you want to further insulate it, you could certainly wrap it with some electrical tape. So go, go ahead and tuck that behind the speedometer. We're going to pop the handlebar cover back on. In much in the opposite order of how we assembled it. And before I put the screws or the mirrors on, I want to test the operation of the headlight. So you can see I turned the ignition switch on. The low powered running light is now on. So it kind of illuminates all the lenses in this projector beam style headlight. And once you start the scooter, the low beam and high beam are going to be, become operational. So you got your low beam and the high beam, which adds an additional element to the low beam. So go ahead and replace the center screw below the headlight assembly at six o'clock. Tip the, the handlebars to the left or right. The horn cover's got four tabs that engage into the frame. Shift it down, replace the screw. Pop the badge in. the pair of screws behind the handlebars. Take care not to over tighten these very small screws. Make sure the handlebar gap is perfect on both sides before tightening those screws. Tighten your mirrors all the way to where they stop and then back them off one, uh, whatever it is, a quarter turn, half turn to get the mirror heads directly over your grips and go ahead and tighten the lock nuts. 
with the mirror in position here. Here I got three Vespa GTS scooters with three different headlight options. We're gonna do a shootout of the three different headlights and the beam patterns and how much light they throw and also a sample of the color temperature of the light they throw. So starting out with a stock headlight, this is the standard reflector headlight found on pretty much all GTSs. It's never changed, you know, starting from the GT200 back in 2002, 2003, been the same headlight. They made some minor changes to it, but pretty much works the same, 55 watt halogen headlight. On our Vespa Everywhere bike, it's got the standard reflector, but has the retrofit H4 LED bulb. Very easy to install, works with the stock reflector, an inexpensive option to add more light output to your Vespa with a cooler white LED look to it. And here's the latest option, the complete LED projector beam headlight replacement assembly. You can see it's got four separate elements in there the, that have a lens that project the LED lighting to the correct positions, gives you a really nice cutoff for the low beam. And of course, it's got a very cool look, kind of that angry eyeball look. So here we got the stock GTS 300 headlight with the halogen 55 watt low beam on. You see it's got a clean cutoff as any stock headlight should have. Uh, the warmer, kind of typical of an incandescent bulb. And there's the high beam, kind of throws light a little further. So here's the H4 LED retrofit bulb that we sell installed in the stock housing on a Vespa GTS 300. You see it's got a pretty decent cutoff, the nice LED cool white color. Uh, doesn't throw much light right in front of you, but the light output is much brighter than the stock halogen. And when you do the high beam, it adds an additional amount of light thrown much further as well, as you can see when it, the high beam goes on over the low beam. So here's the projector LED headlight retrofit. You can see it's got a very nice cutoff and it's got that typical of LEDs, nice cool 6,000 Kelvin uh, lighting. Looks really good. The cutoff's perfect on it. Nice uh, line right across the door so you know there's very little glare to oncoming traffic. Once you go to high beam, adds the additional light much further out. Makes a nice oval light. And you can see in comparison to the stock, it also lights closer in front of you too, so evident by the light on the ground. So now you're in the modern world with Trick LED headlight on your GTS. You have much better visibility. Uh, the beam pattern is very nice with this headlight. Nice flat cutoff on the low beam. The high beam reaches a little bit further. And plus, first and foremost, it looks really trick, especially on this black bike with the black inner um, bezel that's built into the headlight. The lens design's identical to the stock headlight. Can't ask for more. The quality's been great. We've been testing these out for months before we started selling them. We've had no problems with them. They work great. Uh, one thing, if you do want to make any adjustments to the height of the beam, you can remove the headlight. You can add a washer to, to the top or the bottom pair of mounts. So between the plastic tabs and the headlight assembly, you put a pair of washers you know, on the top or bottom, whether you want to move it up or down to give you a little bit of adjustment. Doesn't have the adjustment screw like a stock headlight would. So thanks for watching the video. I hope everybody finds this useful and hope everybody buys one of these cool headlights for their GTS. I'm building my custom Sprint. If anybody's followed our channel, I'm gonna put one of these headlights on my Sprint and you can see our other video for installation on the Sprint in Primavera. If you're looking for a less expensive option, there's the retrofit bulb. You can look for the, our other LED installation video for installing the LED H4 headlight replacement bulb for the stock reflector. Uh, for all things Vespa, check us out on the web, scooterwest.com. Check out our dealership, Vespa Motorsport San Diego.
Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, any other social media platform that comes along in the future. Vespa Motorsport, follow me, Robot Vespa. Until next time, Robot here, signing out.